Hi True Hope Church, my name is Christina, and today for our devotional we will be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So if you have your Bibles and want to open them with me, we will head there. Like I said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 1 through 11. And I'm just going to start off by reading us through that. So chapter 5, about the times and the seasons, brothers, you do not need anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. When they say, peace and security, then sudden destruction comes on them, like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the dark for this day to overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, we must not sleep like the rest, but we must stay awake and be serious. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, we must be serious and put the armor of faith and love on our chests and put on a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. So, first of First Thessalonians was a letter written by Paul to encourage the residents of the city and challenge them to grow as followers of Jesus. So Paul and Silas had originally planted a church in Thessal Thessalonica um, before having to flee because claiming Jesus was king instead of Caesar was dangerous in that time. Um, so Timothy, a disciple of Paul, he visited the city later on and returned to Paul with an update. So this letter, 1 Thessalonians, um, which is one of the first letters they think Paul may have written, it's a response to what Paul heard from his disciple Timothy. So as we read right at the start, I need my Bible actually again, um, right at the start we hear that they're talking about the day of the Lord, right? And so this is the end time. This is when Jesus will come again. Um, in the previous chapter, chapter 4, I was kind of reading through it, and it draws, draws an image of what Christ's coming will look like. Um, and so we can imagine that the goal of chapter 5 would be to have this hope that's laid out for us in chapter 4 to inspire us to live faithful lives um, in kind of what we're going to get into in chapter 5. So he then goes on to describe this day as a thief in the night. night. And what that means is it'll be, we won't expect it. Right? People can predict it all they want, but at the end of the day, no one knows when that time will come. Um, and then this peace and security, he is ironically alluding to that in verse 3. And as I was doing some research on this chapter, I found it interesting because peace and security used to be a really popular Roman propaganda that they used to throw out. Um, and so they claimed that this peace and security would come through Caesar, which, you know, doesn't quite fall through um, in reality. Peace, security, control, they're all an illusion, um, which is applicable for the times we're in right now, too. Um, but then we move on to verse 4, and Paul starts to contrast sons of night with sons of day. And we see these two contrasts a lot in the Bible, right? With righteousness and unrighteousness, or walking in the spirit versus walking in the flesh. Um, and here, Paul is trying to communicate that despite the nighttime of human evil around them, that um, these people should stay sober and awake as the light of God's kingdom dawns here on earth as it is in heaven. So Paul is encouraging Christians as sons and daughters um, to be, at, at, he's encouraging sons and daughters of light, of day, um, to be awake, meaning alert, morally ready, putting on the armor of faith and love in this hope of salvation, which we talk about in verse 8, um, and to be ready for Christ's coming. So he finishes off in verse 11 by saying, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. And that's just a reminder that as believers, we're not alone. Um, we're all in this together and we can all have that collective hope. So Alongside that, um, I wanted to add that this being ready, it doesn't look like paralyzing fear or all-consuming fierce preparation, hoarding toilet paper um, for the end times, right? It 
more often than not just looks like life daily walking with Christ in everything and anything. So at the start of this pandemic, um, a C.S. Lewis quote was circulating from one of his essays in 1948, the context being the potential coming of an atomic bomb. And I wanted to quickly share that with you. Um, so it says, he says, let that bomb, when it comes, find us doing sensible and human things, praying, working, teaching, reading, listening to music, bathing our children, playing tennis, chatting to our friends over a pint and a game of darts, not huddled together like frightened sheep and thinking about bombs. They may break our bodies, but they need not dominate our minds. So given Jesus's coming is something us believers look forward to with great delight, it can quickly escalate into something that's all-consuming. And as Christians, we're, we aren't supposed to be totally focused um, on heaven, and we're not supposed to be totally consumed by life on earth, right? So there's this healthy balance that we're trying to attain. And yes, we're called to keep watch for Christ's return. Um, but when he comes, let him find us loving our neighbors, laughing with our families, serving our spouses. So I think the main idea I'm trying to get at here is um, we need to keep watch for Christ's return. Let us not be surprised nor fearful at the day of the Lord, but let us be alert and ready for it. Um, so thanks for joining me on this devotion, and go out and be blessed, True Hope Church.